G'day guys and welcome back to our week one of our Little Cup Wi-Fi APA League. This week we're coming up against Odds and his Memphis Stuffles. Um, before we get into this, this is the first of hopefully many Wi-Fi leagues to come on the channel. Um, it should be a whole lot of fun. Um, but yeah, getting, getting right into it without wasting too much time. Uh, taking a quick look at... Odds' team here. You can obviously see the six that he's going to bring on the screen. Um, they were the main... They were pretty much what I expected, really. Um, I didn't really expect anything different, so I kind of prepped pretty hard for these mons. Um, but looking first off, looking at his team, and looking at the first mon you can see on the screen here, Dodo, uh, he doesn't have a switch in, like, at all. And even in the other four mons that he decided to leave in the back, he has no flying resist. And actually, no, he had one flying resist. I can't remember what it was, but that still got two shot by a brave bird, I'm pretty sure. So he, this Dodo comes in and clicks buttons. It's, it basically one shots everything and it can claim six kills if, um, if we get a bit of chip on a couple of things. Um, so, moveset this week, very, very standard. It's Brave Bird for obviously clicking buttons. Drill Peck is there in case we don't want to take the Brave Bird recoil and like we can two shot most things for, say, for example, the Marini or the Cubone has already chipped a little bit and we found out he's a EV Light users. Uh, Knockoff is there just to remove some items if we get Dodo in early game. And Pursuit is just, well, I didn't really need a last move. Um, pursuits just sort of guarantee the kill on something, not give him a switch into something. Um, so yeah, it was a scarf set this week, just because I outsped his entire roster with Dodo. Nothing could hit 18 or 19 speed naturally, and so therefore by scarfing this, I can't get revenged by something that is a surprise scarfer. Um, so yeah, just max speed with Jolly Nature thrown, max attack, and... That's all the EVs we had room for. Moving on to our next mon, we got Drowsy here. Uh, good old boy Jazz Hands. And this was this was my check to a couple of things. This was my Fennekin check, and this was my Solosis check. More so Solosis, because that thing is scary against my roster. Like, against the rest of my roster, it, it couldn't really afford to run all the coverage it needs. But depending on the six that I brought, like if you had, say, Psychic, Shadow Ball, Hidden Power, f Fighting, or Fire, maybe, and um, and Trick Room. If you got a Trick Room up, that kind of meant I had to give him a Mon um, to be able to get in, say, Pornia under Revenge, or something like that, um, which you'll see is a Mon that's coming later on. Uh, so it was just, this was also a way to keep a couple other things healthy. Uh, Wish Protect with Psychic and Toxic. Didn't really need another move, because he didn't have a Dark type. And the Mons that resisted Psychic, I wasn't going to stay in on anyway. So I thought Toxic was nice to just spread around some status. It also let, tells us whether Solosis is Magic Guard or whatever other ability it gets. Um, I don't think it gets regen like Reuniclus. Oh, well, besides the point. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty standard scent. Um, Insomnia, because... Forewarn wasn't really needed, and I thought well, in, cl in case some surprise sleep moves come on something. Um, the EV Light, because again, helps it check things better. Uh, moving on, this is another mon that can sweep his team. This was this my tier 4 mon here, Rosie the Slugma. We're rocking with a Life Orb offensive Slugma this week, with Flame Charge, Flame Thrower, Earth Power, and Recover. If you look at his well, if you look at his team, the two mons that resist um, Flamethrower are the Fennekin and the Marini, and they're both hit very hard by an Earth Power. If we get a Flame Charge up, we outspeed anything that's not Scarfed. Life Orb is just a hit really hard, and then Recover, because I just didn't really need a fourth move, and in case I was going to die to Life Orb Recoil, thought, why not just throw a Recover on there? Um, but yeah, Rosie can put in a lot of work this week. Um, next one here, we got Bowtie. Uh, didn't really have the most amazing matchup this week. Um, it's kind of a, a pseudo-check to Mankey and a pseudo-check to um, Cubone. Also, I wanted to bring Defog on something because he's got that Pineco, as you can see there. Um, but 
so yeah, Bowtie I felt like had the better matchup out of this or Cutie Fly. Um, so I'm running the Eviolite Max Defense Bold with a rock friendly number of HP, throwing the rest into Spadef and then just a little bit in speed, which yeah, you can see there. Um, yeah, so we're just this was another flyer, so another unresisted Brave Bird Mon. Uh, with Roost, Brave Bird, Defog, and then Leaf Blade to hit that Cubone super effectively. As I said, we're kind of a pseudo check, and depending on what sort of Cubone set he is, we might outspeed. Um, he does obviously get the Fire Punch, so that's going to do a whole lot of damage to Bowtie here, but if I get off a Leaf Blade, then it puts it in range of so much of the rest of my squad. Um, but next on, we've got our first round pick. We've got Ponyard here. Ponyard did, Ponyard does alright, it obviously gets hit very hard by the Fennekin, by the Cubone, by the Mankey, um, but does outspeed, does outspeed the Cubone at least, so he can get a big Sucker Punch or a big um, knockoff off. Um, looking, like it was, this was a way for me to bring rocks to sort of deter Sturdy from Pineco or just chip a few things down, like maybe a Mankey that wants to switch around. Um, knockoff is all, always very nice. Berry Juice was... Because I believe I could live... It was... Live something from Cubone. It wasn't a... Um, wasn't an earthquake. I think it might have been a boomerang from Cubone. If I'm not mistaken. I'm not 100% sure on that. Don't quote me on that. Um, but I think it was like... I could live one boomerang hit. Pop the berry juice. And then get back to full. And then he'd live the next one. Um, didn't really need another item. Um, had Eevee Light on two mons already. So I was like... Oh, why not? This was also my um, my way of revenging the Solosis, which was a bit of a problem, as I've already said. Um, and now, last mon that we are bringing, we're going to bring Streamline our Wimpod. This is both Tier 4s are coming Week 1. Um, this was, I felt, was going to be a very good lead against him, because looking at his roster, I predicted a lead of one or two things. He was either going to lead the Pineco and try to stack me, and for that I have Taunt, uh, Fast Taunt, and then he can't really do anything to me. Or he was going to lead the Mankey, and if he's not Scarf Mankey, then I can get off a Scald and hopefully burn, or just do a nice, decent amount of damage to it. And if he is Scarf Mankey, then most likely he's going to go for the U-turn, and, well, Wimp Out will activate. So I felt like this was a phenomenal lead, um, and that's what I ended up going with. But um, saying that, let's get straight into the battle. Um, we... Got the battle just here, as you can see on the screen there. Yes, we we are challenging odds. Um, so I've done one thing right. Um, let's get right into it. Oh, I think I've just moved that slightly. Much better. Very professional right here. We do everything very professional on this channel. Let's get rid of that. So as you can see, we're challenged by odds here and we're going to go and lead with Streamline here, our Wimpod, um, as he does inside to lead with the Mankey. And I'm thinking, okay, my play just here is to click Scald, because I want to get off some damage, as we does reveal that he is Choice Scarfed, and Streamline says, no, nah, I'm getting out of here. And so we go into our own Choice Scarf Dodo. This thing hits the field a lot quicker than... I initially thought, and it's just going to click Brave Bird and claim a kill. And two turns into our first ever Wi-Fi match, we have said goodbye to Mankey. And that is phenomenal. Like we take a nice chunk of recoil as he goes out into the Cubone here. And I'm like, well, I could do a nice hefty chunk with this thing, but I don't want to risk it being Eviolite and more defensive. So I'm like, I'm just going to go into the Wimpod, sack it off, it's done its job. But as you'll see, this thing whips out a blizzard. And I'm like, what? <laughs> that was obviously for the Rowlet, because he probably predicted a full Fizz Def set. And so I'm like, I'm just going to click Scald, because this kills. And so now, four turns in. That crit didn't matter, by the way. We calped it out, and that always killed. Um, so two turns in, we have gotten rid of two of his enormous threats. And he goes into Marini here. And I'm like, well, this thing... Just so he can't, like, set up T-Spikes or be any nonsense, I'm going to let Wimpod go down as I can just get a taunt off on this thing. And Marini goes for Sludge Wave, which, by the way, that's a pretty sick animation coming from a Marini. It's one thing I love about Wi-Fi, is that you get to see all these cool moves. 
as Wim Hood goes down, and I go back into, I go into my pawn yard, and I'm like, you know what, this is, this is a perfectly good time to just click the Stealth Rock. Um, get some rocks up, I was hoping to get them up before he doubled into Pineco, but he made a good play there, as I'm just going to go for the knockoff, get rid of this thing's item, um, probably the berry juice, yeah, it does about half, so I could, I could potentially kill here with another knockoff, but he does have Stealth Rocks up, and that does make three of my last five mons weak to it. So I'm just going to go straight down to the bow tie. Uh, this thing doesn't get any ice moves unless it's running hidden power ice, and then, well, that's that's such crazy next level prep. Uh, we take a bit of damage from rocks, and I'm like, well, in this exchange, I can click defog, and if he wants to just set up, then he's max one layer of hazards before I kill him off. But, so I click defog as he decides to just explode. And I'm like, oh, this might take down Bowtie. I didn't count this. I just sort of watched. And you'll see our boy Bowtie here eats that like a champ. And he does 9 damage and Pineco is down. As he goes into Fennekin and I'm like, oh, this this kind of bad. Let's not like take a fire move here. So we go into our boy Jazz Hands. This is one of our checks for this. See those nice little fingers going off as he goes for the Psychic. And that does three damage. And this is great. So we can just we can just click buttons here. Like this thing is not threatening to us at all. Goes into Solosis here as I fired off a toxic. I figure I could hit the um I could hit the what was it called? The Fennekin and just do some chip. Or I could find out if this was magic card and it is indeed magic card. As I'm like, oh well, I can't really hit this thing too hard. So I'm just gonna chip away at it with Psychic, and see what he has to hit me, and turns out his best move to hit me is Flash Cannon, which is phenomenal. Um, not quite sure what the Flash Cannon was for, probably the Cutie Fly, because I could come in and like bug buzz this thing. As uh, so I decide to throw up a Wish, as he goes for one more Flash Cannon, that's not doing a whole lot, and I think I go, yeah, I go for the Protect here, because I, I think he had a 6.3% chance to knock me out, so... I didn't want to take that risk, as he makes a good play and goes for the Trick Room, and I'm like, well, I was going to pull a switch, but now Jazz Hands kind of has to sit around and just eat some hits. So he goes for another Flash Cannon, and that does 8 damage, as I go for a Psychic here, just to get off some chip, and then you'll see this, this process is kind of rinse and repeat, as he's going to go for a Flash Cannon, I'm going to, I think I throw up a Wish here, I should throw up a wish. My drowsy's at one health. Yeah, so I throw up a wish as now I can go for the protect to get my wish and I can also stall out a turn of trick room by doing this because my play here is he's just clicking flash cannon. Um, so my play is I want to get Pawniard in, but I also want to get it in as trick room runs out and that was this turn here, so I decide to make the play, go into unsheathed, our Pawniard, as he goes for a flash cannon, doesn't make any crazy reads or anything, um, and that's going to do about 8 damage, which is a resisted hit, non-stab, and that just shows you the power of Solosis, like this thing is a threat, uh, knockoff is going to blow this thing away, as you can see, Solosis is no more, we've got a life orb, so that's what, we, what I kind of expected, as he goes into Fennekin, and Fennekin is, again, I'm not taking a fire move here. I'm going to go into Jazz Hands. And Jazz Hands is going to eat a, well, he's not going to eat a Fire Blast because Fennekin didn't have its glasses on. And, well, this Fire Blast is just going to drop Drowsy. I'm pretty sure that's Specs damage. Um, played this about a week ago, so... Um, but yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's... Yeah, it was Specs, because then I went into Slugma knowing I could eat a Fire Blast. And I actually decided to... Because these last two mons left were weak to the Earth Power, I just decided to go for that. And as you can see, that does a monstrous chunk to Marini. Look at Big Rosie here, putting in the finest of work. And goes for another one, and Rosie's going to claim her first kill. And the Marini is down. So, looky... Looking here, we've got a we're in a four on 
Four on one against this Fennekin. It's a Specs Fennekin. He can't lock himself into anything other than Fire Blast. Rosie's got those swift moves. Going to dodge the Fire Blast. Did not matter. That never killed. And just drop this Fennekin. And that gives us a 4-0 victory in our first week of Wi-Fi. And I'm very happy about that because, as some of you know, my Little Cup Showdown team has been hot poo-poo this season. So getting into Wi-Fi, getting a victory, that's what we like to see. Um, yeah, so that was that's going to be the end of this one. Um, very good game to odds. I know this is also his first, um, his first showdown league. Not showdown, first Little Cup league, if I'm not mistaken. So um, he brought some quite nice prep for considering this is his first league. And I mean, I've play, I've been playing Little Cup for quite a while. It's it's one of my favorite. It is probably my favorite format. So good game, and we will be back next week, same time with our week two game against Matt O'Shea, a <laughs> yet another attempt to not get mollywhopped by Matt. Um, but yeah, you'll have to tune in next time to see how that one goes. But for now, guys, I'm out.